You all have loved my pork vindaloo recipe, but a lot of you did not get the bright red vindaloo color. Some of you thought I used red color in my vindaloo. Hi, I'm Sharmi and today I'm sharing all the secrets of my vindaloo paste and how to get that bright red color. I'm also going to share with you my chicken vindaloo recipe. This vindaloo will be bright, spicy and delicious. Before we get started, can I ask you to please subscribe and press the notification icon. It will really help me out. First of all, let me tell you, I do not use food color in my recipes. Honestly, I never thought much about it because I always get that bright red color in my vindaloo paste. But today I'm going to share all the secrets to get the perfect color and flavor in your vindaloo paste. I'm going to talk about three key steps to get the perfect color in your vindaloo. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the ingredients. Here I have around one kilo of chicken thighs. For chicken vindaloo, I'm using these thigh pieces without the skin. You can use any parts of the chicken, but it should be without skin. If you're using chicken breast, you have to be careful they don't dry up. For chicken breast, cooking at medium heat for less time will do the trick. Now let's talk about the first step to get the perfect vindaloo red color, chilies. Let's talk about this chilies. Here I have some Kashmiri dried red chilies, Kashmiri red chili powder, and some spicy dried red chilies. Look at the color of this Kashmiri chilies. They are dark red in color and quite glossy. I buy the best Kashmiri red chilies and then I select the best looking ones. I will select eight of this Kashmiri red chilies for my vindaloo. This Kashmiri red chilies will add lots of color to the vindaloo, but they will not be spicy. So I'm using some dried spicy red chilies as well. This will add the heat to my vindaloo. Again, I will get the spicy chilies, which have a deeper red color. Something like a guajillo chilies. They are spicy and they have a deep red glossy color. I will use five of these spicy red chilies and I will select the best looking ones. I will de-seed this dried Kashmiri red chilies. If you don't de-seed them, it will reduce the color in your vindaloo. The Kashmiri red chilies have lots of seeds. Uh, so it's better to deseed them. My Kashmiri red chilies are deseeded. Now I will soak both these chilies in half cup of white vinegar. I will microwave it for one minute and soak it for 30 minutes. Place another bowl over it so that it can soak properly. This will help to soften the chilies faster. For my chicken vindaloo, I'm also using one teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder. When I add this to the oil, it will bloom and develop more color. I did not add this to my pork vindaloo because pork have lots of fat and it will develop the color without the chili powder. So you get the idea, you can develop your own combination. To get more color, add more Kashmiri red chilies or to get more heat, add more spicy red chilies. Increase or decrease the chilies as per your preference. My pork vindaloo was on the milder side, but I definitely like my chicken vindaloo on the spicier side. So I'm using five of these spicy hot red chilies. So this was our first step in getting that vindaloo color and this is the most important step now let's talk about the whole spices i'm using one teaspoon of cumin seeds one tablespoon of coriander seeds two teaspoon of black pepper five green cardamom one inch of cinnamon one teaspoon of mustard seeds and half a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds these are the same whole spices I used for the pork vindaloo recipe. But I have slightly adjusted the quantity for my chicken vindaloo. We will roast and grind these dry spices. Keep the heat on low. Add the dry spices. Toast them slightly till the aroma is released. It will take around two to three minutes. My whole spices are already roasted. Now I will take it off the heat and I will put it in a bowl and let it cool down. While my whole spices are cooling down, let's talk about the rest of the ingredients. Here I have eight cloves of garlic, one inch of ginger, one four teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of tomato paste, one large onion, one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and oil to fry the onions. The second step to get the color in your vindaloo are the onions. I prefer to use red onions to get better color. White onions are also fine, but it's more important to fry them properly. And I will show you how to do that. I will slice them finely and fry them till they are nice and golden brown. Just separate them. It will be easy to fry and they will fry evenly. Roughly chop the ginger and garlic as well. 
you need lots of garlic for vindaloo so i have the bigger one so i have taken eight if you have smaller garlic cloves take more just roughly chop them because i'm going to put all of them in the food processor that's done to fry the onion heat up a pan keep the heat medium to low once the pan is hot add some oil you need a little bit more oil to fry the onion. It will be around five to six tablespoons. I will fry them till they are deep golden brown. This will take around seven to 10 minutes, so take your time. This is also a key step to get that vindaloo flavor and color. Separate the onions so that they fry evenly. While my onions are frying, let's grind the whole spices as they have already cooled down. I'm using a coffee grinder, but if you don't have a grinder, you can also use a motor and pestle. Grind them into a fine powder. I wish you can smell it. It's smelling amazing. It's already golden brown. I want a little bit more deeper color, so I will fry it for a few more minutes. At this stage, keep an eye on them. If it get burned, it will leave a bitter taste in your curry and stir constantly. It's almost done. I will switch off the heat now and remove the onions from the oil. Drain the oil a little bit. Our onions are ready. Just look at that beautiful dark brown color. I will let it cool down before I make the vindaloo paste. In a blender, add the fried onions, chopped ginger and garlic, our roasted and powdered spices, salt, sugar, and the soaked chilies along with the vinegar. Grind them into a smooth paste. Add a little bit of water to help with the grinding. Our bindalu masala is ready. You can see this bindalu masala is looking great. It has a beautiful color and I wish you can smell the aroma. If you love vindaloo, make this paste in bulk and store them in the fridge. It has vinegar, sugar and salt so it will stay fresh for a long time. Now we will marinate the chicken with this beautiful vindaloo paste. Make sure to coat every part of the chicken with this beautiful vindaloo sauce. I will just marinate for 30 minutes, but you can also marinate it for two hours. If you don't have time, 10, 15 minutes, it's good enough for chicken vindaloo. There is no need to marinate chicken overnight. My chicken is marinated for 30 minutes, so let's make the chicken vindaloo. I'm using the same pan which I used to fry the onions. I will remove some of the oil because I need just one tablespoon. Now comes the third step in developing the vindaloo color. We will heat up the oil and add the turmeric and the Kashmiri red chili powder. The combination of turmeric and the Kashmiri red chili powder really makes the color vibrant. We skip this step in pork vindaloo because pork have a lot of fat and it renders while cooking. This helps the spices to bloom and emulsify, developing that flavor and color. But chicken does not have so much fat, so we are using the oil. Keep the heat on low, warm up the oil, and add the turmeric and the chili powder. Fry for 30 seconds. Then add the tomato paste. Fry for another one minute. Keep the heat really low, otherwise you will burn the spices. You can see the color is really developing. I think it's done. Now add the marinated chicken. I don't want to waste any of the vindaloo paste. Give a good mix. Increase the heat too high and fry for a few minutes. The reason I kept the chicken pieces big so that I can cook it for a long time and it will really develop the flavor. If you have smaller pieces, you don't need to cook it for a long time. Now I will reduce the heat, cover and let it simmer till my chicken is tender and oil is floating on the top. Stir occasionally so that it doesn't stick to the pan. My chicken has been cooking for 30 minutes. Now I will check for seasoning and adjust the salt if needed. My chicken vindaloo is almost ready. I will cover it and let it cook for another 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes and you can see the oil is floating on the top. My chicken vindaloo is ready. You can see the color is so vibrant and it's beautiful ruby red. It's all the chilies and the spices that has created this beautiful color and aroma. The gravy is thick and luscious and is coating the chicken so nicely. If you cook it right, you don't need any coloring in your food. 
My chicken vindalo is ready. It's looking gorgeous. So let's give it a try. The chicken is pork tender. Let me dip it in the sauce. Wow, it's a flavor bomb. Spicy, tangy, delicious. I just loved it. The chicken is tender and soaked up all the vindalu sauce. The sauce is spicy, tangy, with the hint of sweetness and bitterness. This is how a vindalu should look and taste like. This vindalu will be great with some rice or naan. So guys, I hope I convinced you to make some great vindalu and also given you the steps to get that vibrant vindalu color. I hope I have answered all your questions related to vindalu paste and the color. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe and see you in the next video.